In the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at modeling um, 3D models from photos. And we're going to be doing a model similar to this, not exactly this one, but you can see that we have a photo here of a building, and it looks pretty accurate. You can see all the photos on, on all the different sides that have been applied to this building. Unfortunately, we don't have as many photos to make our building quite as full featured as this one, but um, we're going to start off with just the front facade of a building and then a side as well. And this will be the side and the back. Um, but I want to point out that this particular photo, all I had was the facade, and you want to make sure that the facade is nice and clean and straightened um, so that you've corrected all the perspectives. Um, and then what I did was just kind of photo edit that particular um, image so that I could make a sidebar or might make a side panel. And so all I did was take some parts from the top and put it down in the bottom and recolor them and add a little base and then take away the logo and then that became the side of the building now you could of course take the gray stone and maybe duplicate that across make a pattern out of it and duplicate it across or maybe make these other bo uh, stones these uh, lighter stones so that you can make more of a side of a building I, I did it pretty quick here anyway um, whatever building that you have you can also find images from all over the place and kind of conglomerate them together. What you do want to be aware of though is using um, a similar resolution and size for your images. And you can see here between the two images we have the exact same size and that will make our life a lot easier when we get into modeling. You don't want to have a front facade that's very low resolution and then a side that is um, you know, extremely high resolution because they won't work very well together. Anyway, once we've got our, our files saved, we're going to go into SketchUp. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then move this over to the side so I can kind of figure out where this character is going to be and where that building should fit. And it should kind of fit right here. And I'm going to go to Import that image. So I have this on the T drive currently. It's under Gas Building. And so you'll notice by default it says SketchUp files are what I'm going to import. But I'm going to go to um, all supported image file types. And now I should be able to see the front facade JPEG. I'm going to go ahead and move just around just a little bit. It'll kind of snap to that green line there, which is kind of nice. And then I can scale it up. And I'm kind of using the person just to kind of figure out what size it should be. Now if it's not exactly position don't worry about it because you can always position it afterwards with the M key move it down to the origin and then I'm going to move it back and then of course you can also scale it with the S key and if it's the wrong scale you can adjust that as well before you go too far now that I have that we have two choices we can we can break it apart here or we can go inside of it um, I think actually what's best here is to explode it um, because we need to get it away from being a, a photo. I, th I thought we could double click to go inside, but not so. Um, but we need it exploded, so you right click and choose explode so that you then have um, an actual uh, regular, uh, I guess, object here that you can model with. Now what we're going to do is extrude out the back of this, and we're going to extrude it out with the push-pull tool so that it's about the same distance and width as it is um, in the front. Because if it's about the same, it, it definitely makes it easier. Now you'll see we have this image here in the front, and if we look at the back, it's actually reversed. And then on the sides, it's stretched. Now the reason why is because we have what's called here a projected texture. And a projected texture is what we need for modeling, but it doesn't always work well when we have something like this. So if I go to the back of the building and I right click and I change the texture to, so it's not projected, you'll see that it corrects that picture and it turns it the other way around, which is really, really good. If I go to the sides and do the same thing, take them off the projected, you'll see they're kind of there but not really placed exactly where we want. So in order to um, place the images exactly where we want, what we're going to do is go to the, one of the sides, right-click, go to Texture, and then change the position. 
Now this is the standard view for our positions. We have um, a position here that moves the texture, a point that moves the texture. This one scales and rotates the texture. This one skews it, and then this one does some sort of distortion to it. Now an alternate way of working with these is to right click somewhere within this um, mode and go to fixed pins instead. And what this does is, is allow you to basically drag out the four corners of your material um, and place them where you want. And I find this a little bit easier to work with um, than the other one when I'm trying to match um, a texture specifically the way we are here. We could even come here and just make sure that our position is set right. And it does seem as though it is. Now I can go to this side, do the same thing. Move everything to all the corners. And you can just click outside of it. You can see, notice this, when we had the projected texture, it wasn't just perfect. So that's why it's, it's a smart idea for us to go to each side and to fix things if needed. Oops. There we go. Looks like everything is fitting now. We can just press the space bar, get back to it, and you can see now we have applied that material on all the different sides. Of course, we're not going to apply that material on all the sides. We're going to use um, different material for the sides and the back. So in order to go to that material, we have two choices. We can make a new material, or we can change an existing material. The problem is that we don't want to change the existing material that's here, because if we were to change this material for something else, it would actually affect the front as well. So I'm going to go to the side and change this into a unique texture. So I'll just make that into a unique texture, then it won't be affecting this one. In order to be able to tell that it's a unique texture, let's go up, I guess I can just click on the paint bucket, it comes up with the materials list, and I'm going to go to all the ones that are in the model, and you'll see here are the, the two facades that we have. Here's the facade front, and here's the new material that we made, which is the facade front number one. Now with this particular um, material though, we're going to edit it, to change it into a different material. So I'm going to go to edit and instead of facade front I'm going to browse for a new picture. And the picture I'm going to be using is going to be the facade side. Now let's change the name and you'll see that that material has been applied to my object here. What we need to do though now is re-map um, this material or, or reposition this material. So I'll need to go back to the black arrow, right click, go to texture, position, and then make this fit the way it needs to. There we go. And that looks like that's fitting pretty well there on the side now. Now we do the same process for the back and the other side as well. In fact, now that we have that um, material, we can use the material paint bucket, use the Alt key, click on it, and then just paste that material to the other sides and then um, uh, reposition them. Now I do want to point out that we can make new materials. If I make a new material, um, notice that I was currently on a material, and so it wanted to make the new material based upon the material I was just on. That's basically doing the same thing as right-clicking somewhere and saying, let's make uni a unique texture. So instead, what I'm going to do is close the texture so I'm not on any material, and make a new material, and this is a brand new material. And I'll call this side 2, and I'm going to load, I'm going to get the side again. And now watch what happens when I apply that side. Now what's happening is that it is actually so small that it's repeating this texture like crazy on this building. And so here's the benefit of us applying the material and redefining it rather than making a brand new material and applying it. You know, even though we can come in here and position our textures just like before, 
let's see, once we kind of get our, our points and, and fix that perspective, there we go, we can snap that up. It's just a little bit more work to go about it this way than the other. Now sometimes there are going to be benefits to you having a unique texture for maybe the back versus w with a side because you do have some other things that you can do. You can adjust colors, you can make it a little bit darker, you can make it a little bit um, lighter if you wanted. So that way we could affect that one material without affecting the others. Now what I'd like you to do um, is think about a material that would go on the top as well. And you can find lots of different materials that are here, even if you want to give it just a plain color for right now. Um, and even though we don't have a material for the top, you might want to find one um, or just create the top of a building according to what you think would work well. In the next tutorial, we're going to go and um, actually do some modeling with this. So go ahead and save your work and go on.